Budgets with percents. How much you can spend depends on how much you make. Pretty straightforward, right? In other words, using our vocabulary, your expenses depend on your income. Now, there's no perfect formula on how to budget, but there are uh, different sources that provide guidelines on how much to spend in different categories. So what that means is there's sort of like rules of thumb about how you should spend about this percent of your income on housing or this percent of your income on entertainment. So what you see is there's this uh, spending guides, guidelines example here, and there are certain categories with ranges. In fact, in this one, every single category has a range. So what's really important is that for any single budget, if you decide on a number within this range, like say 30% for housing and 15% for transportation, you need to make sure that all those percentages add to 100. And what that means is that your expenses end up equaling your income. So I don't like that it says income up there. This is really like your expenses. And these, what we, what we do when we make a budget is we usually decide on uh, fitting those expenses within a percentage of your income and your income is considered after tax this is the spending income that you have available each category is made up of a bunch of little pieces but some categories are more likely to be fixed and some are more likely to be variable and some just have a healthy mix of the two so let's look at a couple of them housing is a good example of something that's more likely to be fixed and this is because rent payments and mortgage payments are pretty well um, consistent from one month to month. Those can go up, like your, your rent can change after a year, but uh, they're pretty consistent. Transportation can really be fixed, part fixed and part variable. Some costs are very fixed. so. Examples of the fixed part would be uh, your financing, if you financed a car, or insurance. But there's also the variable part, which would be like gas can be quite variable, especially as gas prices change, and repairs. Food is another one that can be part fixed and part variable. We've talked about groceries and how groceries are pretty complicated. They sort of fit into a bit of both, but if you're making a budget ahead of time, groceries is a good one to try to make fixed. And if you set a budget that you want to be in, then week to week as you're doing your grocery shopping, if you find that your bill is a little higher one week, then next week you try to save and bring it back down. So you can try to land within that fixed budget. But eating out is very hard to do that with. It, it, I mean, you can set yourself an eating out budget, but uh, depending on the places you go and how often you go, that can change quite a bit. So that can be more variable. Now, a good example of this is where does a cell phone bill go? This is where it gets tricky. Is a cell phone bill a utility? Sure, right? Cell phone is essential to daily life. You need it to do certain things. You might need it for work and for communicating with family. Uh, it, it can be an essential part of your life, especially if you don't have a landline phone. If you only have a cell phone, a lot of it is utility. But is your uh, big data plan really a utility? Or is that personal? So see how it gets tricky? Part of your cell phone might be utility, but if you have a really good plan or you're paying more because you are upgrading your iPhone to some new model with a really nice camera, then a lot of that uh, cell phone bill is probably more on the personal side rather than the utility side. Let's go through a couple of examples. Natasha's moving out on her own after finishing college. She works two different part-time jobs and has an income of $18.50 per month after taxes, 
roughly how much should she be spending on rent. So rent we see is a range of 25% to 35%. So on the low end, she should be spending 25% of 1850, and on the high end, she should be spending 35% of 1850. So let's look at what those two are. On the low end, that's about $462.50. And on the high end, that looks closer to $647.50. Now, if Natasha lives in Victoria or Vancouver, good luck finding a place on her own. So she's probably going to have to look at uh, getting a roommate. But even then, this can be a very hard number in places like Vancouver and Victoria to find a place. You might need to look at a place that has multiple roommates that she can afford that. Or she might have to even think about increasing this if she can't do that to live in the city she needs to live in. Alternatively, if you live in a cheaper part, like uh, in the Victoria area, if you live out in Souk, she could maybe find a place with a roommate that gets her much closer to the low end of that budget. Another example, Jacob sees a jacket that he really likes from shopping downtown, and it costs $150. Does it fit within his monthly budget if he earns $1,200 per month? Let's find out. So down here in the list, we see the clothing budget is between 2 and 7%. So I'll go with that high end. Does it fit within the 7% part? So if, if he buys a lot of clothes, and he budgets for spending 7% of his budget on clothes, then it would be 0.07 for 7% times his uh, monthly after-tax budget, which is $84. So the answer is no. The, but the jacket does not fit within his monthly budget, but is there a way he could afford the jacket? Absolutely. If he did two months of budgeting uh, his, his clothes budget, he'd get 84 times 2 is $168 of clothes over two months. So he could buy the jacket if he really saved next month and didn't buy any new clothes. Or if he was planning ahead, he could live a very cheap month this month to be able to afford the jacket the next month.